Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. In this session, we will learn or understand how we can use Python for loop and range function. So guys, loop is nothing. Loop is a programming structure, right? That repeats a group of lines until a specific condition is met. That's it. So if you want to run some specific lines of code again and again, then we can use of loop. Fine. Using loop, we can reduce many lines of codes. So I am giving you an example. Let's say, can you print prime number between one to hundred? Without loop, print the prime number will be very tedious and cumbersome task. Okay. So, but with the help of loop, we can easily print the prime number between one to hundred. Okay. So we will see lots of example in this session. And before that, we will discuss uh, what is the range function and how we can use them. Okay. So, so the range function we will use in the for loop. So let me go to the Jupyter notebook. So here, first we will understand the, what does the range function? Okay. So here, let's see if you mention here the range and question mark, then once you hit the shift and enter, then you can see the some definition of the uh, range function and you can read the doc string. Okay. What it means for an example, let's say if I mention here, the range is 10. Okay. So it will give me zero to 10. So see what is the zero and what is the 10? So here range your starting position, yeah, right? Your starting position is position is zero here, right? And stop position is, which is 10. That will be exclusive. Okay. And by default, the step size is one. By default, step size is one. Okay. So by using the range function, we can get sequence of number. Your number will be start by zero by default and each number will be increment by one. Okay. And it will stop before whatever number you have specified. Let me give you an example. Let's say if I'm using here list range of 10. See, so here the by default, it will be start from zero by default. Zero and whatever the size you mentioned, that will be exclusive. Let's say zero to nine. So the same thing you can get, let's say zero and 10. Both are the same. Fine. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to change the starting position here. Let's say list range. I'm going to start my range from two and 11 list once again from three and 15 and the by default, the step size is one, right? Now, in case you want to change, then you can change it. Let's say I'm going to mention is three So see. If I'm saying, can you generate the even numbers or like odd numbers? So list range. I'm going to start from, let's say two and for 20. So, this is the, so these are the even numbers. So the same we can get for the odd numbers. So for an example, let's say one and 20 and three. So these are odd numbers, right? Once again, let's say if I'm using here the range and I'm going to start my range for an example, let's say 20 and my stop size is one and my the step size is minus one. So we can like print the reverse order, right? So you these things you need to remember. Now I'm going to tell you how we can use the loop. Okay. So let me write here for loops. 
So for an example, I'm going to create a list. Okay, so how, how, can, I, how can I apply a loop on list? Simple, for i in LST. So guys, this is the structure of the Python loops. Okay, so here you need to mention your iterables and this is the iterable variables and this is the print command. See, for an example, let's say for i in list of Python, then print of i. So I can get each character using the for loop. Now for an example, let's say what I'm doing here, I'm going to generate some of the numbers for i in a range of eight. Then I am using the print of i. Simple. Right? Now let's say how we can generate the odd and even numbers using the loop. As we have seen using the list uh, or using the range. Now the question is how we can generate these number using the loop. So let's say I'm taking a variable which is even list. Blank list I'm going to create. Now I'm going to apply a loop for i in a range. I'm going to start the range function which from two and this is my the last size and step size is two. Okay, so these things you need to rem remember the 50 will be exclusive. Now, even list, even list dot append, which is I. Now I can mention here, let's say print even numbers are format and I can pass even list. Even list is not defined. Okay, so L should be caps here. So you can see here, we can easily generate the even numbers from the uh, range and using the loop looping concept. And the same you can also generate the odd numbers. Okay, so for an example, let's say I am saying I am going to create a my list list of range from for an example this one. Okay, now print my list from this list. Right? Can you extract the even numbers or odd numbers using the looping concept? Simple, right? So let's say I am taking a blank two list for the even and for the odd. Okay. So what can I do for num in my list? Simple, if whatever the number or whatever the element of your list is moved by the two and we are getting the remainder, which is zero. It means that number is even, right? Else that number will be odd. Okay, so simple, we can let's say here, so print even, which is E and print odd. Okay. So you can see that, right? Using the uh, loop, the life is very easy. Now I'm going to change the situation. Let's say I'm going to create a dictionary. How we can apply the same loop into the dictionary. So let's say I'm going to create a name for an example, Daniel. And here I'm going to mention the mobile number. Let's say. And let's say this is mobile number. And I'm going to mention address, which is anything. And grade, I'm going to mention, let's say this one. Okay. So this is my the dictionary. The question is how you can apply a loop over the dictionary. So in case if I mention here, let's say item in dictionary or let's say simple I, I am going to mention here. If I'm going to print the I, can you guess what will happen? So in case you are mentioned the dictionary name, so by default, the for loop will give you the dictionary keys. So these are the dictionary keys. Okay. So using this loop for an example, copy and paste. 
what I'm doing here of I. So we can get values as well. Another ways to get the values for I and DCT values. And you can get the values. Values, right? Not value. So we can get the values. Fine. Let's say another example I'm giving you on a string of the using the for loop. So for an example, let's say for I in range and whatever the length of your string. Fine. Now what I'm doing print, I want to access the each character index of your string. Okay. So how can I get, let's say character at index, which is zero. I'm using the F string concept, right? We have seen how we can use the F string method in earlier videos. So here are the format and we can mention here the I and Fine. So using this concept, we can access the each character of the string. See, so character at index, which is zero is P. Character at index, which is one, which is pi, y, and so on. Okay. So at the initial, I was saying, can you print the number between one to 100, which is prime number, right? Can you print? So see how we can print using the for loop. Let's say I am taking the list of prime number. Okay. The prime number is that number is completely divided by the one and that number itself. Those are the prime numbers. So what I'm doing here, let's say for I in range, I'm going to start from two and hundred. Okay. Now, Another loop I'm going to start here. I'm using the nested looping concept for J in range and two of I. Okay. So whatever the, your elements, okay. Whatever the, your numbers. Okay. Let's say for an example, then uh, the next number, let's say for an example, this is five. So that loop will be start from two to five. In the next iteration, your loop will be six. So it will be have two to six. Here, we need to check some basic condition. Only one basic condition we need to check. Let's say if I and your mode operator, which is J equal to equal to zero. Okay. It means I am getting the remainder is zero when I am dividing the number, which is I divided by the J. Now, in case that number is completely divided, it means that is not a prime number. Okay. Then I will be break my loop. Okay, we will see break and continue in another next session. But as of now, what I'm doing, when these number are completely divided, then I will be break my loop. Here, in case, let's say, if I'm not able to divide these number completely, it means that number is prime number. Now, list of prime number, this one, dot append of i. Now simple print list of prime numbers are you can mention here list of prime number C. Okay. So in case, let's say you want to exclude the two, then you can use here from the three. Okay. So guys, Simple, this concept you need to remember while you are applying the looping. Simple, this is your for, which is nothing with the keyword. And I n, this is, this is also keyword. And here you can mention your iterables. Iterables could be anything. Okay. Like to define the loop into the Python is very easy as compared of other programmings. Okay. So guys, we have seen lots of example in for loop. Okay. Uh, on the daily basis, when we will have the session, we will use the for loop most frequently. You will have more confident and positive when you will do practice of the session. I hope you enjoy this session. In case any question on this, let me know in the comment below. And one more thing, guys, you can access this playlist.
Okay. So you can access and save this playlist for learning Python in the, into the depth. So all the videos are placed here in sequence. Some of the videos are placed for, for the Python exercise. Okay. So you can watch and try to give your solution as well. Fine. So gradually this playlist is going to add more videos. It would be great for you if you will save this playlist or for the Python learning rights. So guys, in case any question uh, on uh, the loop looping video, please let me know in the comment. Thanks for watching and have a great day.